This here is an HP Z420 workstation PC back in 2013 at an original retail price of well over $2,500. What? And I managed to pick one up on my local used markets for just $100. Now that might seem far-fetched on paper, however a lot of these are going for around that price on eBay, so something you can go get right now. But that is not what's got me most excited. What's got me most excited is what the seller left inside. Let's have a look. All right, guys, so the system is opened up and the thing that might be jumping out at you is what the seller left behind. So the seller actually threw a graphics card in here, which actually I'm gonna take out and show you guys. So what we got here is an XFX RX 560. So let's see if we get a focus there. So this is a obviously a kind of a budget, very budget card for nowadays, but a two gig card, yeah, that's gonna be pretty limited in terms of what you can play in terms of games. I don't think we're gonna be able to play any kind of high fidelity games like Warzone or Cyberpunk or anything like that, but I'm willing to bet that this card can probably run some easier to run titles without a problem at all. And the great thing about it is if you're able to actually pick up something like this, now I know a lot of these HP systems, you're not gonna, you'll be extremely lucky to find a graphics card like I did, because heck, even this 560 right now probably goes on eBay for like, I don't know, we'll have to see. I'm guessing around $140, $150, but I'll put it up on screen kind of what these things are going for. But it's pretty amazing that I managed to pick up this card plus the entire PC that's got everything else that I need basically for a hundred bucks. Couple other things here too to point out, this PC has a 600 watt power supply, which Actually, let's see if we can see of any standard rating. Let's see if it's on the bottom of this label here. It might just mean by saying 90 plus efficient online based on the stats that I found on these machines. It might just be like an 80 plus white or gold. I don't know. I'd have to do a little bit more research on it, but. And next, let's take a look at the memory since that's something easy that we can pull off. Looks like we've got four sticks installed. There's two on this side, two on that side. This is a 2013 machine, so obviously it's gonna be DDR3. I think the minimum spec for these machines, if I recall correctly online, I just did a quick glaze over. The minimum spec would be eight gigs, so I guess that would be two times four. But let's see what we got here. Even eight gigs wouldn't be terrible, I guess. Let's yank this one out. So we've got Samsung four gig module, nice. So we've got 16 gigs then total. So that's definitely gonna meet the RAM requirements in terms of most RAM usage for you know higher end games. Although with this video card, obviously we're not gonna be able to play things super crazy. But then last that's in here that I can easily just quickly reference and look at, this is a hard drive, a spinning hard drive, 500 gig hard drive from Western Digital. Yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a bottleneck in speed in terms of booting things up. Uh, I'll probably throw my SSD that I normally just have my games on and test with. So I'll probably just disconnect that and just boot off SSD. But aside from that, the thing that we don't know what we exactly have here is the CPU. It is a 2011 socket, but this workstation, the, the Z420 workstations, they come with an array of different CPUs and the very basic minimum ones are CPUs that are four cores, eight threads and boost up to 3.8 gigahertz, like I mentioned. So, I mean, even if we have that, we should be plenty fine in terms of gaming horsepower. So at this point, nothing much else to say. Uh, I guess, whoa, this is kind of funky. Whoa, I don't like this. Let me see here. This is coming off the power supply. This is what was plugged into my GPU. Um, I got some cable clips holding it on from the power supply from a 600 watt power supply. Well, <sighs> These 560s don't obviously need a ton of power. This is probably just fine. I don't like the fact that it's connected to Molex. This is a PCIe power cable down here. What in the world is going on with this machine? I don't know. Maybe this guy just wasn't really proficient in doing hardware upgrades, but this almost seems unnecessary. Yeah. These are two PCIe cables coming from the power supply. Now, two six pins. Oh, that's a bummer. Wait, no, this is a six pin card, so he didn't need this extension at all. Okay, well, we're gonna save ourselves this and disconnect this extension since we don't really need it. I don't know why he did that. Maybe we'll find out, <laughs> I don't know. But this is completely unnecessary. We can use one of the PCIe actual power leads, which I would definitely recommend you do if you're you know, using something like this. So let's put the graphics card back in. 
So let's boot this guy up. Um, I'll just boot off of this hard drive and we'll see how slow that is. It, and uh, maybe we can get an idea of uh, the life and how bad this drive is. I have no idea how, I mean, 500 gigs is not very much these days for a spinning drive let alone anything else. And I really don't want to use it if I don't have to. So we'll just boot everything up, make sure everything's good and operational. And uh, then we'll uh, see what we can do next in terms of gaming. Stick with me. Here, there's the power button. Okay, showing that we are getting power to the video card, which is good because obviously we were kind of questioning that before. Let's see if we get a post, waiting for it for like a beep noise or something Let's see oh I don't think my monitors turned on oops oh yeah it is okay oh all right there we go let's see what that says oh okay so everything's good it looks like it's actually wanting us to hit f1 to boot so let's hit f1 I think there's an OS on this drive at least I think that's what the seller told me we'll see what happens here see if it just boots up one eternity later well, it doesn't seem like I'm getting anything here. I'm not real sure what's going on. I've got an SSD. I'm going to try. Maybe boot that next. Maybe I don't have an OS on this drive. I have no idea. So I'm going to shut this sucker down and try again. Okay, got an SSD installed here. We're just going to kind of let it dangle here. It doesn't really matter. going to see if we can boot off that. So here we go. Starting up the PC again. It's good and noisy starting up. Gotta love those old machines like this. Let's see what we get. Here come the fans. All right, there's a post screen. Aha! Okay, we've got, so like I said, I got an OS on my SSD. I don't know if there was an OS installed on that hard drive. I wanna say I might have actually even told the guy, don't even worry about it, but we're loading up an OS. so. This PC seems to be pretty fine. Let's let the OS boot up here. It's gonna take a minute and uh, let's, I wanna see what kind of CPU we got. Alrighty guys, so we've got it booted up. Actually that SSD didn't take too long. It was just initializing and we are now up. And as you guys can see, we've got actually a six core 12 threaded processor. So I was actually expecting like a four core eight thread. So we've got a fair amount to work with, although I gotta do some research on exactly what processor that is, exactly what it boosts up to. But I think also this sucker can handle an eight core 16 thread processor. I don't know if it's really viable to upgrade to that, but kind of cool to think about considering what we got. So six cores, 12 threads, a, a decent graphics card for a very low end gaming. We've got a good foundation to work with. So I don't know what else should we do here other than throw some games at it live. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get this set up actually a little bit better. So that way I have the camera on it live and we're going to do this live, meaning I'm going to just put the camera on the screen rather than just doing some screen record, keep things easy and simple, and then kind of see what kind of future does this machine have or is it just a good viable gaming machine as it is alrighty guys so here we are in a game and we're gonna just jump out again I uh, don't judge me on my gameplay skill of this game I don't like ever play it unfortunately but I used to play it a lot back in the day but not so much anymore so I kind of know what I'm doing um, so jumping off the bus getting like 60 uh, we dipped down to like 60 frames a second there looks like we're hovering around 85 80, 90 ish, something like that. Again, we're on the low settings. So now that we've landed, we're getting 116 FPS. So pretty solid. I, honestly, I'm actually impressed because we're running on that two gig card and a CPU that can't really boost above what's looking like. It's holding around 2600 megahertz, uh, 2594. So let's see if we can go get into some gunfights here. This is very actually relatively smooth no stuttering um yeah i'm liking it so far but let's see if we can get into some action i'm basically just running for anyone i can find here to kind of put it through the stresses we're kind of taking in a little more environment here it's still hovering 80 frames 86 87 frames it jumped up to it's in the 90s right now so actually very impressive can I drive this car? Oh, you can drive these now. Cool. All right. So this actually might be pretty good for doing some benchmarking as far as just speed of the rendering of the environment. I'm actually very surprised considering <laughs> the age of the hardware and basically, you know, 
this system is a workstation. It's not really meant to be first meant for playing games. Ah, like I said, I'm terrible. Get this guy. Come on. All right. I don't know if that was a bot or not. <laughs> uh, I don't think he even hit me. Okay. But anywho, guys, I think this is a pretty decent showcase of what this machine can do with Fortnite. I don't have any doubt in my mind that it's still very playable, even with the hardware that we're pushing at, which, honestly, I kind of had my doubts initially, knowing that the CPU wouldn't boost very high, and we're running on a 2 gig video card right now, which seems to be striking a pretty good balance, honestly. So let's jump over into some other games that are popular and just kind of hit it with that. And an open world game like GTA 5 might stress things out a little more. So let's see how that does. Alrighty guys, so let's see how well GTA 5 does here. I got Trevor here, I'm gonna jump into my truck and just uh, let's go cause some chaos. Uh, I guess probably the best way to get some, uh, some stress going on the system. Let's see here. Loading in a full world like this at high speed, pretty good stuff here. Um, doing awesome. I really, I'm actually surprised at <laughs> what this little two gig card can do. Again, we're kind of in a situation where it looks like the CPU is just kind of sleeping through this. I'm really impressed. I mean, it probably has a lot to do with the core count, you know, being a six core, but basically, yeah, I mean, it's at 44% right now. Uh, usually it looks like hovering in the 30s. GPU is pretty up there in usage because that's what we would expect it to do. Now I'm getting into some traffic and I'm averaging 70-ish plus FPS. I can't believe this, honestly. I'm really impressed and I originally had some kind of easier to run games as an idea and I think now I'm kind of curious seeing how well even GTA 5 is running if we can put it through a, a high fidelity stress here and really see what it does. So I originally was gonna do something like CSGO, but I mean, honestly, I think it, seeing how well it's running, for, or it ran Fortnite and it's running GTA 5 right now, we, we should put it through something a little harder to run. So let's, oh, there we go, I'm dead. So let's put it through some I got Cyberpunk, you know, that's probably my most stressful, demanding AAA title I can put it through to really see where the limitations of this machine is. Cause right now we're doing just fine. So let's just jump over to Cyberpunk and see how things go. Alrighty guys, Cyberpunk loaded up. I'm actually really excited to see how things go here. Cause honestly, I didn't even think we'd get this far because I thought maybe Fortnite would struggle and we'd have to dip into the lower quality style gameplay. But here we are, and let's see what Cyberpunk can do. So let's go in here and just set all the presets down to definitely not Ultra. We're gonna do low on everything here, low, low on the quick preset. I think that pretty, pretty much should take care of everything for us here. Let's just scroll through here, make sure everything is applied. Everything's set to low. Our frame rate cap is at 240, which obviously we're not even gonna come close to. All right, let's hit apply. And I think that's it. And I'll just load up one of my games. I haven't played this game in actually quite a while. Dang, very long time. But anyway, so I got some content to load up and we'll see where we go from here. All right, here we go. We are in a car. I just loaded up an old game save here. So this is gonna be probably where you would experience some choppiness if the hardware can't handle things. Overall, I think this is doing pretty good. Let's see if we can get further into the city here to really see how well the hardware is gonna handle this. This car is hard to control, but I'm doing 23 frames a second here. Get out of in my way, car. Oh no, going off a cliff. Jeez, this car is just wild. All right, try to get control here. All right, let's go through the city here a little bit. Go down this ramp. I mean, we're high speed rendering in city detail. I'm, I'm trying to look over in the city as I'm doing this. That probably was not the greatest idea because it just ran me off the road, but this is playable. This is not bad. And it looks, it looks surprisingly good. I guess it speaks volumes to the development of this game. And we're playing on hardware that is approaching 10 years old and a two gig video card. I mean, pretty, pretty sweet. Obviously, like a 3090 and a 
you know, Ryzen 7 or a i9 is going to destroy the gaming performance of how of what we're seeing here. But this is what my channel is about: is finding the budget builds, and we found, I would say, a pretty sweet one. All right, now we're in some city detail, loading in lots of people, running through really fast pace. Yeah, I can't keep control of my car too well, but would I say high teens to low 20s is fantastic frame rates? Absolutely not. But if you're just after a storyline and you just want to experience the game, here you go. So I think this is a pretty good testament. We put it through Fortnite, we put it through GTA 5, and then on a whim through Cyberpunk at it. And I'd say it's doing very darn well for what the system is. Alrighty guys, so man, I am blown away by this machine. I did not at all have as high hopes as I now do for it, being that it's a old eight to almost 10 year old system with a CPU that really doesn't boost up to very high speeds. It's really just a server processor in the end and a video card that the previous owner had in it simply was just a two gig model card. But as you can see through those just quick and raw dirty benchmarks, Sucker can play a lot of games and honestly, most of them pretty darn well. But this machine has a ton of potential left in it and I really want to explore that. Obviously we can do some serious upgrades. We've got a lot of power from the power supply still, 600 watts, which basically is being underutilized and we can throw in a much more powerful graphics card and a much more powerful CPU, which I may have some ideas in for an upcoming video. Let me know if you want to see that. But that'll about do it for this one, guys. Make sure you check in the description down below for some buyer links for stuff on eBay, things that basically I've found that allow you to build up a similar system on the cheap. Definitely has some very awesome value proposition in it. But if you stuck with the video this long, then I'd like to say thanks for tuning into this one. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And don't forget, let me know if you want to see me upgrade this machine further and see what it really is fully capable of.